Hi everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Thirma Olavan Srinivasan. In this video, I will show you how to restore Amazon RDS MySQL database from a snapshot. Let me quickly introduce about myself. Currently, I am working as a solutions architect and I have over 17 years IT industry experience. I am also an Amazon Partner Network Ambassador for Northern America region. Currently, I hold 8 valid AWS certifications. This is the architecture for my Amazon RDS MySQL database. I have already implemented this RDS instance. If you want to know more about how to create Amazon RDS MySQL database instance, please refer my other video. I will insert a link for that video here. If you see, I have three layers of uh, created subnets created. First is the web server layer or the public subnets and the second is for the application level layer and third for the database level. So the first level that is that like you know like a public uh, subnets uh, where I have created an EC2 instance that will be accessed from the internet via SSH. So this instance will act as a bastion host or jump box and from this instance I will SSH to the EC2 instance that I have created on the private subnet that is the private EC2 instance which doesn't have access to the internet it has only the private IPv4 address and from the private IPv4 or address uh, private EC2 instance we can connect to the database so I have created the database on the DB layer and we can connect uh, to this uh, DB using that uh, endpoint URL from the private EC2 instance. Next I will show you how to create a snapshot, manual snapshot from Amazon RDS MySQL database instance. Once we have that snapshot created, I will show you how to restore uh, the snapshot to a new database instance. Enough of the slides, let me log into Amazon Web Service Management Console and I'll show you the demo. I have now logged into my AWS Management Console. Let me go to RDS and show you the RDS instance. If you click on Databases, you can see I have created MySQL database here. It's a DBM file large instance and it's a MySQL. This is the endpoint URL that we can use to connect port 3306 and I have created on my custom VPC that is VPC1 and if you see this is not publicly accessible. And if you see, I have created it on my, like high available instance, multi is You can select multi availability zone is yes here for this database instance. And with respect to the snapshots, uh, I don't have any snapshot at the moment. Let me go ahead and create a snapshot, manual snapshot. This is the DB instance. This is the DB in my MySQL DB instance. Let me name it and then take snapshot. So it's going to take a while. When this is being created, let me go to my database and let me connect to this DB as I already mentioned in the slide I already created two EC2 instances one in the public subnet one in the private subnet uh, first let me connect to the instance uh, in the public subnet via SSH Yep. 
let me connect to it so this is the connection string um, I have connected to my public EC2 instance here if you see the IP address is 10.1.1.10 that is the private IP address I'll show you the private IP address for my public EC2 instance that is 10.1.1.10 so the public IP address is 3.83.1.189 now let me connect to the private EC2 instance if you see my private EC2 instance that doesn't have any public IPv4 address so here is the private IPv4 address Let me copy it and SSH to the private EC2 instance as EC2 user now I have connected to the private EC2 instance like 10, 1, 3, 2, 40. you can see that here and now let me connect to my MySQL uh, database and show you the database MySQL minus host let me to RDS it shows it's currently backing up um, because we are creating a snapshot uh, let me wait once uh, the snapshot is created and then I'll show you both the, um, uh, the current uh, database and then rest uh, let us restore and then create the new database also I'll come back once this is available okay now the snapshot creation is complete let me show it to you here I'll click on snapshots and my SQL DB snapshot one it's created and it is available progress is completed let's go back to the databases and click on my database get the endpoint URL connect to the database port is 3306 username is admin and if you enter it will ask you for the password let me show the databases let me use one of my database that is banking for database let me show the tables it has one table if you see uh, how many data we have in it It has over 63 million data in that database in the table. Let me just query it and show you the sample data set. Just, uh, let's just show the 10 rows. You can see the database. Um, the data in it so, like some if something happens to this database or if for this table or anything we can restore it from our snapshot so let me go ahead and show you how to create a snapshot now we already created a snapshot and here it is and let's restore it from it and create a new database instance Click on actions. 
प्लीज स्टोर स्नैपचैट So the engine would be my SQL uh, engine, and we can uh, create a DB instance identifier. Let me name it as my SQL restore. And by default, it's going to use um, the same VPC. That where we have the original instance is there. Like I'm just going to use the same VPC one. I'm going to use the same subnet group, and this time I'm also I'm not going to have public access to this. I'll say no. And for the security group, I'm going to use the existing one. That's my SQL security group. And. If you see the port, database port is 3306, and DB instance size, we don't necessarily need to maintain the same uh, DB instance size from the original uh, DB instance. We can change it. Originally, if you remember, it was a DBM5 large instance. Now let me go ahead and select a small one, so I don't need a big instance. I'm going to say dbt3 medium and I'm just going to leave the storage type and the allocated storage is default and if you remember the original database instance has a multi AZ deployment but for the restore I'm not going to have a multi AZ deployment I'm just going to uh, have it one instance I don't, I'm not going to create a standby instance and availability zone I don't have any preference let it create uh, I have two oh, subnets into availability zone for the subnet group uh, that is US is to 1A and US is 1B and for uh, authentication I'm going to use select password and IAM database authentication uh, encryption uh, since my original database is uh, Encrypted the snapshot is encrypted and the restore is also is encrypted by default I'm Going to leave everything as default. I'm just going to click on restore DB instance Yep and creating now it will take some time I'm going to pause this video and then come back once the restore is completed so it's creating here a dbt3 medium instance I'll pause the video now the restore is complete now and the new database instance is created so let's select the my SQL restore you can see it's a db3 medium class let's connect to this new database and see if everything is okay so let me exit from my original db instance and now let me connect to the restore instance so the user credentials are going to be the same from the original db instance Banking fraud database. Me 
see the data set just checking if uh, everything is good like the, if the may you know if, if I have, we have all the data it should have over 63 million data yeah it has 63 62 62 zero yep looks good let's query it and see the sample data set I'm just limiting it to 10 everything looks good so now you know how to create a snapshot manual snapshot from a MySQL uh, database instance from uh, Amazon RDS and also you know how to create a uh, instance from a snapshot how to restore a snapshot and create a new database instance on Amazon RDS hope you would have find this video useful thank you